Senate Republican Whip, Senator John Thune. Senator, great to have you. Thanks, Mike. Nice to be with you. Your colleague, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, has taken some heat on election security. I want to play for you what Senate Democratic Leader Chuck Schumer said, and I'll get you to respond. I still don't have a really clear idea why Leader McConnell is so adamantly opposed to doing anything on election security. Maybe it's because President Trump, in his childlike way, resents the fact that people point out that Russia interfered. He thinks it delegitimizes his presidential election. But that's not a good enough reason if that's the case. Your thoughts, Senator? Well, look, I mean, um, there's been a lot that's been done on election security. Congress has appropriated almost $400 million. And if you saw in 2018, I always ask people, did you see a single story in 2018 about Russian meddling in our American election? Uh, and the answer is no. And the reason is there weren't any, uh, because the, uh, the election officials at the state level, the federal level, did a really good job. We have constant conversations with those who are responsible for protecting and making sure we have firewalls in place against that kind of meddling in our elections and uh, they tell us what they need and I think right now uh, we're on a good course obviously the Russians are going to try and and we have to we have to know that we have to be prepared for that and we have to have the right mechanisms in place to defend it defend against it but we're doing that and the Democrats and what you saw from Senator Schumer and others is purely and simply grandstanding that's all it is a big change coming at the top of our intelligence apparatus. You've got your former colleague, Senator Dan Coats, is going to be leaving. Congressman John Ratcliffe is coming in. Some have complained that he may be too partisan. Uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo believes in him. Take a listen to this. He's very smart. Uh, I'm very confident he'll do a good job. I, I remember people saying I'd be too political to be the CIA director, too. I hope that history will okay. will inform us all that that wasn't the case, that I did my job, that I delivered on behalf of the American people in an appropriate way and didn't allow politics to interfere with delivering important, timely, fact-based intelligence to the President of the United States. So you're the whip. Mm. Is he going to have the votes to get through? Well, I mean, obviously, he's just been nominated. He's got a process to go through a confirmation hearing, and he'll get a lot of questions at that hearing. But uh, I have every reason to believe that he'll do well, and uh, I suspect that he'll be the, the next person in that job. We'll, we'll miss Dan Coates, as you pointed out. He's a colleague and did a great job there uh, delivering timely, and as uh, Secretary Pompeo pointed out, fact-based uh, intelligence to the president and, his, and the decision makers there. And I expect we'll see the same thing out of Congressman Ratcliffe. Is it troubling to you that Senator Chuck Schumer's already come out as a no no on Ratcliffe? I think it I think what it says is that this is the political environment we're in right now that the Democrats you couldn't put up anybody that would satisfy them and uh, so they're just gonna it's a knee-jerk reaction on the Democrats part a purely partisan reaction I might add uh, he deserves a, a fair process a confirmation hearing he'll get asked hard questions but he deserves a, a fair vote in the United States Senate and I would hope that the Democrats wouldn't prevent that from happening uh, by getting out there and making comments like that at this early stage so much has been said about the back and forth between President Trump and Chairman Elijah Cummings. Your colleagues in the House are having their Republican retreat in Baltimore in September. Is that awkward? And do you think the president will go? I, I would expect the president would go. He attends most of those retreats, and it's an opportunity for him to talk with the people on Capitol Hill who are responsible for helping deliver on his agenda. But I don't think there's any, I don't think anybody will, will, there will be any second thoughts about going to Baltimore. Uh, obviously, the back and forth that he's had with uh, Congressman Cummings is, uh, is something that uh, we've seen in the last couple of days, but uh, I don't expect that will have any long-term consequence or impact on the House going there or having a very good retreat or the president attending. Uh, some people are uncomfortable with the tactics, the tweeting and stuff like that, but putting the spotlight on Baltimore, might that help the city at some point? You know, I think that the president always in his uh, tweets, you know, probably strikes at some core issues, the way he goes about it. Obviously, some of us would rather that he didn't do it exactly the way he does. I think it's important to be respectful to people in your, in the, you know, the public debate, the discourse that we have. Uh, but obviously, pointing out problems and areas where policies have failed is, uh, is something that's uh, part of the public debate. And I think that if you look at areas of this country that haven't done well and the kind of leadership that they've had over the years, I think it paints a clear contrast between the kind of leadership that certainly we want to see for not only for our cities, our states, but for our country. And there's a clear and stark contrast between that and, and, and what the Democrats want to see is more socialistic policies, which I think lead to the kinds of outcomes that, uh, that the president was talking about. Senator, thanks for your time. Thanks, Mike.